What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down a wide receiver's routes that you need to study. So I hope this video helps you guys out. hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and you would like to train with us this offseason, we're going to be traveling out to 12 states across the country for two-day-long QB and wide receiver training camps. Next up on our camp tour, we'll be coming out to Charlotte, North Carolina. Then we'll be heading out to Dallas, Texas, the DMV, St. Louis, Honolulu, Boston, Cleveland, Austin, C. Seattle, Newark, Denver, and Los Angeles. So if you guys want some more information on that, how you can sign up for our camps for a quarterback or receiver, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out to one of our off-season camps. Let's get started. So we're going to be looking at routes here. If you guys have not already seen these routes, these are some of the most insane routes that I have seen from Jameer Calvin. He's a wide receiver out of Mississippi State. First route we're going to be looking at is a slant route. So he is one of the twitchiest, one of the quickest, and one of the best route runners that I've seen coming out of college. It's amazing to me that he does not have a million different eyeballs on him because I think he will very, very soon. So let's break down this first route. So he's going to be running a slant route on the goal line here versus this kind of inside shade catch technique. So right off the bat, you can tell he knows how to move. He knows how to change tempo. He knows how to change speed. Why would he decide to go with a move like this? Because one thing that a lot of people will give him credit for is being fast, being twitchy, you know, explosive wide receiver, but they won't give him enough credit for, but we will, is his football IQ, knowing how to run routes. So pre-snap, as a wide receiver, every single time I come up to the ball, I have to have a pre-snap process. I got to be able to identify what leverage the DB has, how close or how far he is, and what type of coverage it is. So this DB has inside leverage. It's man coverage because his eyes are on me, and he's about five yards away on the goal line. So if you have to run a slant route, the mistake that a lot of guys will do is they'll do try to square up the DB, give him a fake outside, and then run the slant. But the problem with that is that when you attack a DB's leverage, what is he going to do? He's probably going to keep his leverage, right? His sole responsibility being inside shade is to take away the inside. So to get him to move, to get him to bite to the outside, I have to threaten his outside shoulder because that is what's going to get him to move off of that platform. If we just try to square him up, he's just going to keep that leverage and that slant's going to run right into him for no separation. So now, why wouldn't we try to do something called like a diamond release on this? And a diamond release is where you would attack the DB's outside shoulder for three hard steps, try to get him to open up on the fade and run a slant. And that is because we're on the goal line, fellas. Nobody runs a fade on the goal line full speed. What they do to sell fade on the goal line or what they do to run a fade on the goal line is it would be like a back pylon type throw. So what you would do is you would change tempo with your release and then accelerate to the back pylon. And that's what... Um, Calvin makes this release look like. He comes off the ball. He gives this kind of footwork type release. This is not something that you have to do, by the way. This is kind of a more creative way to do this. You could skip at him. You could shuffle at him. Most important thing is we're closing the distance and slowing down the tempo. So now, obviously, to get him to jump to this fade, he uses a great crossover move. So when you do this crossover move, fellas, it is so important that you get to this position that Calvin is at right now. He is stepping outside the DB's frame. His hips and his shoulders are selling like he's going to the outside. That is what will make that DB bite. On the goal line, DBs are taught to be super patient. Watch the wide receiver's hips, stay patient, and keep your leverage. So to get him to bite, my mindset needs to be, I'm going to do everything in my power possible to get him to jump to the outside. So I need to make sure that I'm stepping outside of his frame. I'm throwing the hip. My hips and shoulders look like I'm going outside, and that's what can get you more separation on a slant or any inside type breaking route. So obviously an insanely quick route. Obviously, he does a great job changing tempo, but that's the reason why behind it. And that's something that all great route runners have. You look at Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, Keenan Allen, all those guys, they all have a reason why. They could ask, they could tell you why they're doing certain things on a route. They're not out there just freestyling and doing whatever they feel like. So let's play this again, full speed one more time, and then we'll get into a few more routes from Calvin that are even more explosive than this. So this next example here is going to be a five yard out route. Now, I want to talk about his release. So everybody's going to, like we said, he's a very explosive, very twitchy wide receiver. How do you get more explosive off the ball? How do you get more explosive out of your stance? And that is used, that is from something we call a kick step. And so Calvin has a great kick step, and you're going to see that throughout the course of this video. But this play this full speed, he's running like this five yard out or flat route, however you want to think of it. So let's play it again. He comes off the ball and you see how explosive his release is. So what does that come from? That comes from what he does with his back foot right here. Now, a lot of old school wide receiver coaches think that any movement other than just straightforward is a false step. You don't need it. It's wasted motion. This is a part of the release. So remember, like we said, let's talk about the IQ side of things first. This DB is lined up where? 
He's lined up inside shade. Inside shade, maybe about three to four yards off. He wants to protect the inside. So if I have to run a five yard out, do you think that you just want to take off and go run the five yard out? No, because that DB is going to get hands. That's exactly where he wants us to go. And it's going to be a very tight window. Again, and if we just kind of run to the flat route, that quarterback's not going to be ready for us. So we need to make sure that we get vertical and then break to five. So I don't want to just run it. I want to make sure that I threaten his leverage. Let's try to threaten him where he doesn't want me to go. He's inside shade, doesn't want me to go inside. So let's threaten him to the inside. So with my release, I kind of have to square him up a little bit. I have to attack his midline or inside shoulder. And how I can do that and how I could do that quickly is by using this kick step. So this kick step behind, a lot of people will say that's unnecessary. That's a false step. But what that does is that will load up your hips. So when you load up your hips off the line like this, that allows you to explode to the outside. That allows you almost to springboard to squaring up this DB, getting that speed off the line, that twitch off the line that can force him to react. Now that kick step, is something you could use on any release. You could use it on this kind of like skip release towards him. You could use it on just a one-step release. Let's say that DB was pressed up inside shade. You could use a kick step here and just throw one hard step to the outside. You see how much ground he gains with that step. You see how much more quickness he has simply because he does that kick step. And that sets him up to attack the leverage of the DB. So everybody wants to run routes like this. Everybody wants to run twitchy routes. They want a fast get off. They want to put the DB on alert right as, the so right as soon as the ball is snapped. And that kick step is a great way to do that. So fellas, I recommend adding this kick step to your arsenal. The only time I wouldn't do it is when do you think? When that DB is right up in my face, not giving me any space, because when you kick behind, your feet are susceptible to being pushed off balance. I'm going to say that right now. And that's why a lot of people hate on this move. But that kick step, trust me, fellas, if you have the space to do it, I highly recommend it. There is something about loading up your hips that will help you explode to the outside. Most of the people that hate on that move have never tried that move and have never felt the explosiveness and the twitch that you get from your hips in this scenario. So let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job by Calvin using that kick step to square up the DB and set him up with that same crossover move that he loves to use. Okay, so this next example here is going to be a corner route versus outside leverage off man coverage. So this is a very awkward situation and all great route runners are very good at getting open when it is not the designed typical, you know, outside release on an outside breaking route. They are very good at uncomfortable situations. They are comfortable being uncomfortable. So let's play this thing full speed and let's watch what he does. So obviously we have outside shade off man coverage and he's able to get a ton of separation on this corner. Why does he do that? Let's talk about pre-snap what we got. So we talked a lot about inside shade on the last two examples. Now, what if the DB is outside shade? If the DB is outside shade in this case, and you can see because of the field goal post that this is the left side of the field. I know it looks like he might be to the right and the quarterback's over here, but the quarterback is over to the right side. Okay, fellas, I just want to make that clear. So when we're doing this move and he's outside leverage, pre-snap, I come up, I see he's off man, I see he's outside leverage. What's he trying to prevent right off the bat? He's trying to prevent the outside route. So he doesn't want us to run a corner, run an out route. But a lot of people think that, oh, if I have to run, and this is again, old school wide receiver teachings, that if I'm running an outside breaking route, I have to take an outside release, regardless of it, right? So if I'm running a corner, I need to get to the outside of him. I can never go inside because it's an outside breaking route. That is completely wrong. That's completely false. You need to be comfortable taking an outside release or an inside release for any given route, for the exception of a mandatory outside release fade. So reason why I do that is so I could give the quarterback space to lead me. Any outside breaking throw, there's another defender on the field and that's the sideline. There's an extra defender on the field. We obviously can't throw the ball out of bounds. So you need to give your quarterback space. Imagine if Calvin ran off the ball and just tried to force the outside release here. This DB would weave. He'd keep his leverage. He'd be right on Calvin's hip and there would be less surface area for the quarterback to throw us open. So we have to take what he gives us with the inside release. Don't force it. Don't try to force what isn't there. So when he comes off the ball, and again, this is an extremely creative way of doing this. He attacks the inside shoulder of this DB. He forces vertical. He sells like he's running to the inside, his hips, his shoulders, his speed, and his stride. All of those things go into selling your routes. You got to run hard. You got to run in full stride, and you got to commit your pad level to whatever you're trying to sell. 
Because now that DB opens up. He thinks that it's an inside breaking route. He thinks it's a deep seam, maybe a bender, maybe a dig. And now when we make that break and slip under him, look at all the space I gave my quarterback. That is a quarterback friendly route. And that's what I have to do with all of my routes. You have to know situations, fellas. Playing the wide receiver position is situational football. So the creative part of this route is that he uses this tempo change, right? So anytime that you run a route and like, let's say, for example, he wanted to run a post route, right? He could come off the ball, do this tempo change and then accelerate up and run a post. And maybe we've done that before. Maybe I've used that same move on another inside breaking route where I change tempo and then I accelerate. Very similar to that first example we talked about where he changed tempo, sold fade, and slipped under on a, on a slant. Same thing right now. He slows the tempo, get the DB to slow his tempo, then we accelerate. And that is what will get him to overcommit. It's all about selling your routes and knowing how to run your routes. Most of the time, it's honestly about angles. What shoulder are you attacking and how are you selling the route? So that's an extremely creative way to run that corner route, fellas. We just have to understand leverage. You've got to understand why DBs play a certain way to structure your routes accordingly. So let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job by Calvin being patient, changing up the tempo, and accelerating to flip that DB's hips. So now... He is going to be running a, um, a whip route here. Now, this whip route is probably one of the toughest breaks in the book because you have to drop your hips and you have to be able to get out of the break in little to no wasted motion. So what a whip route is, is where you're essentially selling like you're running a slant and then whipping back to the outside. But you keep your hips and your shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. So let's play this full speed. Let's, let's look at what he does here. So he comes off the ball, gives a move, breaks on that slant, and then gets that separation. So biggest thing about a whip route is obviously we have to run a slant route. First, we have to sell the slant. I have to try to get this DB to bite on the slant and then I whip back to the outside. So when he's inside shade, we're on the goal line. Think about the very first example that we looked at, right? I'm actually going to rewind it to that first example. Remember, this is the same look, right? Inside shade on the goal line. What did he do? He came off here. He was patient and he used a crossover move to win on the slant. So what do you think you want to do on your whip route? You want to make it look the same, right? And that's exactly what Calvin does. He changes tempo, gets a crossover, and gets that guy to commit. It looks the same until a certain point. Fellas, running your routes is not just about selling the route by running full speed, running hard. Yes, that's an extremely important part of route running, but you have to pair your routes together. I want my whip to look exactly like how I would run a slant in this given situation. Let's think about it from like the, let's think about it from a basic example. Let's say it's press coverage inside shade. You would do probably what? A diamond release if you were running a whip route. You would take three hard steps to the outside. You get him to open up. You slip underneath. He turns, and then you whip it back outside. He's inside shade on the goal line. We know he's not going to play the fade, so we give that little tempo change, cross over, and run the slant. Run it the exact same way so we are unpredictable. Being an unpredictable receiver means that you will be an unguardable receiver. Okay, so he comes off the ball. He does the same tempo, same type of release, same crossover. Now he bursts to the inside. Now, this is where selling the slant comes into play. Nobody is going to believe you are running a slant if you're running with choppy steps. So many times on a whip route, guys will take choppy steps on the slant because they're preparing for the break. We have to run hard. We have to run in full stride. And your hips and your shoulders and your eyes better say slant or better say drag, whatever you were trying to sell. So normally on a whip route, we take three steps on this break. I've seen it run with five. I've seen it maybe ran with one step. But normally, most offenses break on their third step to the whip. So like, let's say you're cutting off of your left foot. You would go right, left, and then right. That would be your break foot. You would break right off of the third step. So in this case, that's what Calvin does. And this is an extremely efficient way to get in and out of this break. This is a very, very tough break to do. So he breaks off his left foot. He goes one two snaps down. Now this third step is the step that is going to get you in and out of this break sharply. You have to snap down. All great route runners have great change of direction, right? They're able to drop in and out of their breaks on a dime, whether that's on a comeback, whether that's on a post, whether that is on a whip. Now, not on a post route, but on a comeback and a whip route, it requires you to drop your hips. So when you're running a route full speed, full stride, running hard, committed your pad level, it's very tough to change direction. So you have to focus on two things. You have to focus on sitting down, sitting your butt into a chair and bringing your chin to your knee. If you can get to that level change position where you sit at your hips, your chin goes to your knee, and it is a violent drop. You see how he's a 
aggressive with the hip drop. That is going to put you into a position where you can decelerate. Now, the mistake that a lot of guys will make on a whip route is they will get to that spot, they'll break on their third step, but they take a million steps at the break. And that takes them a while to get out of the break, right? So when you snap, you want to make sure that after you snap your next step, you hook. You're trying to point your toe to the line of scrimmage. So now your hips are turned, your shoulders are turned, and all you can do is just drive off of that hook step. And that will get you out in the least amount of steps, least amount of time, and get you separation from that DB. Because we sold it, we created energy with my cut, and B is able to decelerate because of my drop, my hip drop. And because my footwork was correct, that's what got me out in the least amount of time. That is a textbook whip there, rip route there from Calvin. Again, make our routes look the same. We want to run a whip exactly like how we would run a slant versus the given coverage situation. Let's play it again full speed one more time. Great job by Calvin making that move, getting that DB to crash, and then winning on that whip. All right, so next example I want to talk about here is a corner route but versus inside shade press. So this is a great move that you guys can use if you're a wide receiver out there and you're maybe not the fastest guy in the world. I think and I think Calvin's very, very fast. Don't get me wrong, I'm not calling him slow, but this DB sticks with him on this play. And this is great for those guys who maybe don't have that burning speed to get around a DB and stack him every time. So Again, if you're on the shorter side, if you're on the slower side, hopefully not the co a combo of both, but if you're on the shorter side or the slower side, you've got to have route running because you've got to find a way to stand out. And your change of direction, your football IQ is how you can do that and get separation against guys who are maybe bigger or faster. So when he runs this corner route, we have inside shade press. Let's talk about what he does. He attacks the DB's leverage, takes the outside release, but he leans into him. I call that a chicken wing move right? So that's a typical move that a lot of wide receivers can do. And you just got to have a plan to use this. This is something that you have to rep out. So let's talk about the situation. We have an outside breaking route versus inside shade covered. So remember, talked about this from the very beginning. What is that guy trying to prevent? He's trying to prevent an inside route. So he's trying to force me outside to his help, which is what? The sideline. Remember, there's always that extra defender on the field when it's an outside route, the sideline. So if I'm running this route, I want to try to threaten him where he doesn't want me to go. He's taught don't give up the inside, so my release better threaten him to the inside. Could he have sold it a little bit more? Absolutely. That could have gotten him more separation. But he just closes the space, gets into his toes, kind of changes the tempo, then he accelerates. And this is probably why, because we didn't threaten him enough, he wasn't able to get directly over the top of the DB. Because anytime that I have an outside breaking route versus inside shade, like we said, we don't want to just take off and run it because that DB will be on my hip and I shorten the field space. I want to get vertical. I want to push vertical. So when he pushes vertical, aka getting skinny, this DB stays right with him. That's fine. If you're going up against a DB who's faster than you, this is textbook what you want to do. If I can't restack, I want to lean. I want to put my entire body weight into him because now when I make that cut, me leaning into him with my upper half is a way to push off without getting flagged for it and without actually pushing off. A lot of guys, if they just extended right here and pushed a DB in the back, that's an easy flag call for that ref. But if you lean into him, you use your body, you lean, even when you're not as big as the DB, that can get you that separation. That lean will get his body language, his body weight shifted to the inside. And guess what? Because I got skinny and leaned, I gave my quarterback space to throw me open, which is the name of the game on any outside breaking route, okay? So I hope that makes sense. But fellas, like we said, Calvin is a very, very smart route runner, very calculated, and he's got the full package. If you can understand how to run routes and why you run routes, and then you have the speed, the quickness, the explosiveness, the change of direction, that is very as a recipe for disaster for any DB or any defense that goes against you. Let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job by Calvin Attack and Leverage, leaning into that DB and showcasing that chicken wing move at the top. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If um, you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you'd like to train with us in 12 different states across the country this year, we're coming all the way out to Charlotte, North Carolina, finishing off the tour in Los Angeles, California. Check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you there. I'll see you guys next time.